Good morning. Great to have you all here today. Um, thank you for coming, and hello out uh, in the Facebook land there. <laughs> Love having you on live stream. Uh, a couple of announcements this morning. Uh, men's group is still meeting, 9.30, right behind us in the Sunday school room. So you're welcome to join us Sunday mornings, 9.30, for the men's group. Ladies group is meeting on Saturday mornings, 7 a.m., at the Fortner House. And we have some fellowship and breakfast and, and a little bit of a devotion time to get us started on our Saturdays. And so that's always a blessing to have. This past Tuesday, we finished up our Tuesday night study. Um, we finished up with the potluck. Uh, so stay tuned because we're, we're thinking of another one that we're going to be doing soon. And I don't know, uh, it may be on Tuesday night still. And it might be at the Fortners or it might be here. We're not really sure yet, so stay tuned on the next Bible study uh, so that we can be prepared for that one, okay? So we're, we're getting ready for it. Uh, missions, we, we still are supporting a couple local missions, the YWCA and also the Rescue Mission, and we've got some canned goods and, and things like that that are collecting underneath the second table over here. So if you have anything that you, uh, dry goods, canned goods, even clothing that you want to donate, you can bring those in and put them underneath that second table. Um, the ladies, about a month ago, put together some care bags for, uh, for people that are like on the streets that you know, you're stopping at a stop sign and you wanna hand one out. We have one left, one doggy bag, in case they have a dog, <laughs> and one of the other ones. And the ladies are gonna uh, plan a time to get together and do some more, but if you need one for your car that you want to hand out, there's one left that you can grab there. Um, so uh, as far as tithes and offerings, if you're here in the sanctuary and the Lord leads you to um, give an offering or a tithe, we have a box back underneath the clock there. Um, also, you can give online at uh, www.pwlivingwater.org and, um, and, and give there as well. Uh, in the corner over here, we call it Carl's Corner, but there's a, a place to pray, a place to take communion. If, uh, if you're feel, feeling led to do that at, at the end of the service, if you need some prayer, we can meet you back here. One of us can meet you back here to pray. Please don't be shy about that. We all need prayer, right? So um, just a thing on that. Oh, Wednesday in the Word, I missed this week, you guys. I just had such a busy week, and I missed it, and, and I'm sure that uh, uh, other people probably missed getting it, but uh, I will get back on track with that. But Wednesday of the Word is a way for me to text message you just a short little scripture um, that uh, gets you through the rest of the week. So if you're interested in having your cell phone number uh, with that and you want to get a, a scripture each week, uh, give me a call or, or catch me after after here and I will make sure that you're on that list to get that okay and then next Sunday we've been preparing for this next Sunday um, is called Sunday Sunday there we go we are going to have a uh, bring your own picnic lunch okay bring your own lunch a cooler or something and bring a little bit of extra in case we have visitors or in case someone wants to table hop and go eat what you have instead of what they brought <laughs> um, but come and bring your lunch and then right after we will have the tables back here full of ice cream sundae toppings bananas and sprinkles and whipped cream and cherries and hot fudge and the whole works it is not healthy but we're gonna have fun um, yeah yeah uh, we'll have ice cream at the whole works so we'll have a Sunday Sunday after we eat our lunch okay and if you don't want to eat lunch, you want to just start with the Sundays, you can do that too. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> all right, I think that's uh, all the announcements for today. Uh, worship team. All right. If you'd like to stand with us and worship, we would love to have you do that, if you can. You know, we just want to also um, remember this morning, I know we, we're going to have, um, in a little bit we're going to have Charlie pray for us, but let's remember to, to pray for those that are 
not heal, healthy right now that that needs some prayer and uh, Lauren and Ernestine is still struggling and and a few others that are that are struggling but also to be praying for our church and to be praying that the Lord would lift up some more leaders for our church for the Sunday school for the youth group um, some more musicians to help us out uh, there's just a lot of uh, uh, needs in those areas and I know the Lord will provide but uh, you know where we can pray that would be awesome yes so. okay but anyway like this first song says we're going to follow him no matter what mm -hmm. no matter Amen. what one two three four where you go I'll go where you stay I'll stay when you move I'll move I will follow one, two, three, four.
like the second verse. You're my
seated. Thank you, Jesus, that we have this opportunity to even cry, holy, holy, holy. Thank you, Lord, such a privilege to worship you today. We give thanks for you, Lord Jesus, and thank you for all the blessings you give us. In Jesus' name, amen. Pastor Ron. voice up here so you can hear me. <laughs> um, I have my assistant. You know, magicians have assistants. Well, this is my assistant. Okay, go ahead, Helen, and uh, get ready. She's going to stand up here. And then I'm going to have you do something. We're going to kind of play a little game. First, let's uh, read Psalm 23:4. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. And when Jesus came to, the, to earth, he brought great light into a very, very dark and shadowy world. Today we're going to play a game of light and shadows. You like to play games? <laughs> you may be surprised at a few things you might happen. Okay, Helen, you want to stand back here and point the light towards me? No, stand back here. Stand back. Stand back. I didn't, right there. <laughs> okay, now what I want you to do is she's going to shine the light on there. I want you to put your finger right up at the very bottom of the flashlight in the, uh, right in front of it. And then, now then, move it forward. Move it towards the, towards the curtain. All right, a further, a little bit further. And then back. So move it back and forth a couple of times. Now what, is, what happens? Does it, your finger get bigger or smaller as, as it moves back and forth? On the on the on the curtain there, it gets smaller. Uh huh. Well, uh, shadows can can be fun to play with. As a matter of fact, my brothers and my sister, and when we were at grandma's, we used to. She had kerosene lamps. Oh, it was fun. We'd take our fingers and we'd make little uh, designs and things happen on the on the ceiling. Well, they can be fun to play with, but it represents the absence of light. Whenever you put your finger up there, you kind of blocked out part of the, of the light. This world can be a, shadow pl a shadowy place and sometimes can be scary. Things like uh, uh, COVID-19, bullies lurk around, illnesses threaten, family, family members argue. Your family probably never argues any. <laughs> and uh, uh, fear of things that what could happen to us, sometimes those things will even keep us awake at night. We just need to remember that God is like the flashlight. And uh, he, but his light never, never goes out. And he is there uh, because he never ceases to shine, no matter how many shadows uh, come past or threaten us, he never ceases to shine. It's like he is our light in our valley of the shadow of death. That was mentioned in the psalm I read a moment ago. I mean, the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. So let us remember that God is love and light will never cease when we walk in his love. So let's pray. Father, help us not to be afraid in shadowy times. Help us to remember that your light shines brightly no matter the, how dark, no matter the circumstances, no matter what we're going through. We don't have to fear. We can walk with you. So help us to look for the light and wait patiently for you to answer our needs in our circumstances. In Jesus' name.
All right, let's pray. Gracious Heavenly Father, we just thank you for this opportunity to come worship you. Uh, we ask that your Holy Spirit come and fill this place. Uh, we ask that you give your words to Pastor Jim as he uh, gives us a message today and uh, continue to bless us all. In your name, amen. Can everybody hear me on my little... Nobody can hear me? You can? You're shaking your head back there, Charles. Oh, it's on. Okay, I don't. I won't need that. You want to use it? Okay. All right. The seventh seal. I think he has it up there already. No, he doesn't. He'll have it up there in just a second. There it is. Prelude to the seven trumpets. Revelation 8, 1 through 13. I'm going to start reading here. Now I can hear me. I love it. Yeah, turn me up a little bit. All right. If you would like to stand to hear the reading of God's word, I love it when you stand. And so does God, I think. Just honor him. If you can. Okay. I'm going to read verses 1 through 8. And... Uh, I think one through seven, and you'll read eight. Okay, here we go. It says, when he opened, this is verse one, the seventh seal, there was silence in heaven for about a half an hour. And I saw the seven angels who stand before God, and to them were given seven trumpets. Verse three says, then another angel having a golden censer came and stood at the altar. He was given much incense that he should offer it with the prayers of all the saints upon the golden altar, which was before the throne. And the smoke of the incense, this is verse 4, where the prayers of the saints ascended before God from the angel's hand. Then the angel, verse 5 says, the angel took the censer, filled it with fire from the altar, and threw it on the earth. Hmm. And there were noises, thunderings, lightnings, and earthquakes. Verse 6 says this, so the seven, so the, the seventh angels who had the seven trumpets prepared themselves to sound. Verse 7, the first angel sounded, and hail and fire followed, mingled with blood, and they were thrown to the earth. And a third of the trees were burned up, and all grass, green grass, was burned up. Okay. Okay, verse 8, and the second angel sounded, and as it were, a great mountain burning with fire was cast into the sea, and the third part of the sea became blood, and the third part of all creatures which were in the sea and had life died, and the third part of the ships were destroyed, and the third angel sounded, and there fell a great star from heaven, burning as if it were a lamp, and it fell upon the third part of the rivers and upon the fountains of water. And the name of the star is called Wormwood. And the third part of the waters became Wormwood. And many men died of the waters because they were made bitter. And the fourth angel sounded. And the third part of the sun was smitten. And a third part of the moon. And a third part of the stars. So as the third part of them was darkened. And the day shone not for a third part of it. And the night likewise. And I beheld and heard an angel flying through the midst of heaven saying with a loud voice, Woe, woe, woe to the inhabitants of the earth by reason of the other voices of trumpet of the three angels which are yet to sound. You may be seated. Yes. Thank you. All right. A lot of information there, church. We're going to talk about it. Ooh, I got a little, I don't know why I've been laying this back here. I got a little hidey place right here. Okay, let's get into this. You know, to this point in Revelation, John has witnessed Jesus open up six of the seven seals of judgment seen on the scroll in heaven. He's opened up uh, six of them. And after opening of, the, opening of the sixth seal and its consequence, hi, Jamie, glad that you're here. John describes... The ceiling of 144,000 Jewish believers, listed by tribe. Remember that we talked, okay, this was 
followed by a vision, and then an enormous crowd of saints, all right? People of every possible race and language, and they were all watching. This was in Revelation 7. Now, chapter 8 is a little bit different. Begins with the opening of the seventh seal, immediately followed by a brief period of silence. I wish in my house sometimes I can open something up. It would just get quiet. Kids would be quiet. Usually that's the time to run upstairs and see what's to eat. So that didn't happen. Anyway, so there was this brief silence, and it lasted for about a half an hour. And I said, why the silence? What's going on there? The scriptures really didn't say but church tradition suggests some possibilities, church. One is that the silence in heaven, and I think this may be true, is a sign of deep respect and awe in the presence of the judge of the earth. Think about that. You're sitting there, and you're looking at God on a throne. I'd be quiet. I'm just saying. And then... It'd be kind of like a courtroom demanding silence when the judge is presiding, okay? Same way in the heavenly courtroom. Secondly, perhaps the half hour silence is the result of what? Of somber reflection on what has just been revealed, on what they have seen. Man, that make you somber. Thirdly, the science, silence in heaven, it could be due to the severity of the actions of the Lord. These actions that the Lord is about to take on the earth. Oh boy. You remember when you were a kid and you got in trouble? And dad was coming down the hall? Oh boy. Or mom was coming down the hall? Oh boy. We could pick one church, but I think it's a combination of all three. I think all of those things were going on. People were reflecting, they were thinking about what's going to happen. So there was silence. Okay, now these judgments which are followed are associated with seven trumpets given to seven angels. And these seven trumpets are themselves part of the seventh seal judgment. They're part of it. Okay? These seven trumpets are sounded. The trumpets still, still, still sound. I like that. One at a time to cue apocalyptic events seen by John who was on Patmos. In this vision, the seven trumpets are sounded by seven angels. Hmm. And after each trumpet sounded, something happened. Something happened. Prior to the sounding of these trumpets, an angel is seen with a sensor, a metal container, and he was used to burn incense. Now in the scriptures, incense is used as a physical symbol of prayer. They ascend toward heaven. Kind of like um, smoke. You know, sometimes in the Bible, when the ancient Israelites would do something, do a sacrifice or something, they'd send up the smoke, and God felt that this aroma was pleasing. It was pleasing to God. All right, let's get into these trumpets, though. Let's see what's happening here. The first trumpet... Judgment is described as what? Rain as a rain of hell. I've been in some pretty nasty hell storms, but a rain of hell? Wow. Fire and blood. The result is a loss of one third, get this, one third of heaven's tree, uh, earth's trees, and it seemed as all the grass burn up, too. Okay? The primary effect, understand this, may be a loss of crops and food supplies, including livestock. This is interesting. Depending on those for survival, all the livestock, the crops, everything burned up. Now, based on the description of these other trumpet judgments, get this. Some have speculated this might have been a great meteor shower. I mean, that sounds logical. I don't know, but it's said it could have been a great meteor shower. The second trumpet, let's talk about it. It results in, I like this, in fire falling from the sky. Okay? And they said, uh, I mean, um, the second one was described like a great mountain. Okay? 
They said it was like fire falling from the sky, but it's like a great mountain. What is this talking about? Okay, in context with the first and the third trumpets, get this, church tradition suggests this might be a large comet or a meteor. Okay, it lands in the ocean, destroying ships and polluting the water. Others suggest that the imagery of a mountain of fire may describe the effects of a nuclear weapon. In any event, get this, the impact of this judgment is that the salt waters of the earth and seas and oceans are destroyed. Loss of shipping, crafts, all the vessels, food and supplies and other effects would be catastrophic and we would be felt worldwide. Just giving you some information here. The third trumpet once again involves something falling on the earth and falling from the sky. Okay, where the second trumpet ju judgment affected the seas and the oceans, get this, the judgment, this judgment affects fresh water. Lakes, rivers, and springs, and streams. These we need for food, water, and transportation. And they're also, like I said, uh, provide drinking water. They're polluted, totally polluted. Hmm. And it results in sickness, sickness and death. Okay? That's in Revelations 8, 10, 11. Look at this fourth trumpet. It also involves something above the earth. Okay? This one was interesting to me, interesting to me because it affected the loss of light. There's a lot of speculation. Well, you know, the moon falls, the, the sun falls. But here's what the Bible says. This could, uh, uh, it's, it's very unique, but it could be caused by the block of pollution or clouds or some other means, okay? Something blocked and blotted out the sun. It's interesting. Dramatic changes would affect us. Energy use, weather, agriculture, and animal life, all that would be destroyed, or greatly affected at least. All right, listen to me, church. As catastrophic as these events are, they may seem, the era of John's judgment can and will become even worse. How, could, how can it get any worse, Pastor? What are you talking about? John talks about a bird. Some people, in other books, it calls it uh, something else. But in this, it talks about a bird flying through the atmosphere, flying, calling out, woe. Woe. Woe is a warning. Woe to those who are about to experience the other three trumpet judgments. Now, this is in chapter 9. It's somehow worse than what has been seen so far. We're going to talk about that in chapter 9, but I want to talk about how Revelation 8.13 affects us today give you some information. Some of it's kind of spooky, but that's what the Bible says. It's going to happen. It's going to happen. I mean, it's an astonishing passage. You know, as I prayed and re read over that, it's speeding us to the closing days of history. God's history. You know, God writes history, and he writes history for us. Do you know that? From the very beginning, from Genesis 1, God planned all this out because he knew we would be a fallen people. He knew we would sin, and he knew Adam and Eve would sin. But God had a plan all the way to the end. John, the writer of Revelation, he tells us these things that must take place. And in the midst of earth-shattering events, there's a pause, an amazing pause in heaven. That's the only way I can describe it. And get this. I think there's a huge lesson about prayer. I think that lesson about prayer is so staggering, it wouldn't even be in the scripture. It would be hard to believe if it wasn't in the scripture. They gathered prayers of God's people. They gathered prayers of God's people. And the saints at the end of the time 
help bring this all together. Did you know that? We need to be praying about the book of Revelation. We need to understand that these things are going to happen, but we also need to make sure we are in prayer about these things. Not worrying about it, church, but be in prayer. You can't stop what God has set in motion. It's already going to happen, but you can pray to God that you're ready. Are you ready, church? What, what does that mean? What does that mean, Pastor Jim? Is your house in order? Do you have a personal relationship with God right now? Have you given everything to God? Or are you holding things back? I'm going to tell you right now, do not wait any longer. Don't hold back. Get ready. It's coming. People don't want to hear that. It's not coming. It's not. It is coming. And it's on us sooner than we think. A lesson about prayer. It's amazing to me there's a connection between the saints at that time and people praying right now. We're more concerned about COVID. I'm not saying we shouldn't be. But we're more concerned about what our neighbor's doing. We are more concerned about other things that really don't matter instead of being concerned about the things that do matter. And that is the things of Jesus. We need to reverse our thinking, church. We need to ask God to help us figure this out. The gathered prayers of God's people are used by God as an instrument to bring this world to his appointed time and ending. People ask, well, how should we pray for that? The easiest way is to ask God where you are in your walk with him. Where am I, Lord, in my walk? He knows we're not perfect, but he wants us to work toward perfection. What? Yeah. Yeah. He wants us to change our direction and go in the direction and follow him. And it's hard to do in a world that says, it's okay to do that. It doesn't matter. It's hard to do that in a world that says, we can Compromise because no one will know. Maybe so, but I gotta tell you, God will know. God will know. And I need to say this again because I want you to understand this. We cannot walk on the top of the fence and straddle it. I'm telling you, church, we have to be one way or the other. God does not want people teetering around like this. He can't use them for his glory. But if we are walking a straight line to our Heavenly Father and we have our eyes on the prize, which is Him, He can use those people for His glory. Churches somehow have got things kind of screwed up and turned around. People in churches want to feel good about coming to church. You should. And what I mean is if you are in line with God, you should be happy and prayerful. But that's not what I'm talking about here. I'm talking about if things feel kind of funny and we don't like it and this God thing is not feeling really real good, we don't want that. We don't want that because it makes us uncomfortable, church. You understand that? You know, when I read the Bible, it makes me uncomfortable. It makes me uncomfortable. I read that and go, uh-oh. What are you trying to say, Lord? What are you trying to tell the old preacher? Trying to tell me to wake up. Pay attention. You should have this little tension going on. You should have those feelings of, oh, I need to pull back on this. And I need to figure out what God wants me to do. Church should be a place of joy.
but it should be a place of understanding that God is in control. God understands, and God will fix it. Somebody said in the men's group this morning, I loved it, I think it was uh, Big Mike here, he said, you go to the doctor's office because you're sick. Jesus said, people come to me in need of a a physician or a doctor because they want to be saved. That's right. That's right. You come to God because you need something different for your life. I can't say that enough. Let me break this down to you. I've got three different movements here I want you to understand. So we can grasp the enormous importance of praying together. Corporate prayer. You need to do it too by yourself. But these are three movements I feel that could help us in these last days. You know, I do it too. It's easy to forget God when things are going good. We do our quick little, thank you, God, prayers while we're going down the road. We get our paycheck, put it in the bank. We got some left over. We can go here and go do this and buy that. We don't give God second thought about where that comes from. And we need to. We need to. Thank you, Father, and thank him for every little thing, every big thing, and everything else in between. I'm going to tell you, it's not yours without him. Oh, look what I did. You did? What are you talking about? What do you mean what you did? Well, look what I have. You have. What are you talking about? What you did and what you have is because of Jesus Christ. It's because of a Heavenly Father allowing you to do that and have that. Get that right here. Get it right here, church. Don't ever forget it. The minute, my dad used to say, you think you're flying high is when you're behind will hit the ground so hard you can't even stand up. We need to be thankful. Movement one. Get this, verse 1 opens with a reference to the opening of the seventh seal of the scroll. We know that. When he opened the seventh seal, there was a silence in heaven for about a half hour. We know that. But to really understanding what the seventh seal is all about, we need to go way back to the beginning of chapter 5. The chapter opens with these words. Remember, then I saw in the right hand of the one seated on the throne with a scroll with writing on the inside and on the back, sealed with seven seals. Remember, church, no one in heaven or on earth could open that seal. There was only one that could open that seal. Who was it? Anyone. Jesus. Jesus. So how come we, dust bunnies down here, can't figure out that we need to be in line to to what Jesus is telling us to. If he was the only one that could save us, what's our problem? What's our problem? You know what our problem is? It's about four inches. It's about four inches of mush here that sometimes just can't figure out what is best for us. And that's why we need a savior. We can't figure it out. No one in heaven and earth could open it. What did John do, church? What did he do when no one could open this seal? Remember? He wept bitterly. He cried and wept because no one was worthy to open the scroll. The thing in the right hand of God that caused him in heaven to shrink back when it came time to serve the scroll.
The scroll must be open, and God proposed that someone other than him would administrate that. He proposed his son, Jesus, to do that. Jesus was perfect. We talked about this about being perfect in the men's study this morning. Can any of us be perfect? No. How does God see us, though? This is what's interesting, church. How does God see us? Anyone? Does God see us as perfect? Yeah, he does. And you know why he sees us as perfect? Because he sees us through what? Jesus' blood. The blood of the cross. That's how he looks at us. I, we said this morning that we are too hard on ourselves. We are too hard on ourselves. God is not that, is not as hard as we are on ourselves. I know I'll do something and go, oh, oh, why did I do that? What we need to do is ask for repentance and move on. Let God take us on. That's what we need to do. Don't beat yourselves up. Don't try to be something that you cannot be. Because all you can be, really, church, number one, is what God wants you to be. And you do that by belief in him. You do that by faith in him. You do that by reading the word. That's how you can be what God wants you to be. And leave the rest to him. Leave the rest to God. No, 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 I can fix it. I can do it. God will sit up there and look at you and say, go ahead and let me know how that works for you. I have been there. Oh, I can get this. And sometimes we try to bargain with God. You know, you know, Lord, I'll do this. I need you to stand over there and watch me, but I'll get her done. There's no bargaining with God. There's having faith in God and allow him to work through you. You can't bargain with, bargain with a holy father. We come to him with our petitions and we ask him, Father, I need this. Help me. I need this. And it's up to him to tell you yes or no or maybe. We're okay with the yes. We get yes. Oh, we're doing the dance of joy. God says maybe, and we're like, well, when? Like a whiny kid. But if he says no, we struggle with that. No, I don't want you to do that, Jim. Why not? Now, what do I look like questioning a holy God? Even though he doesn't care, and he's got mighty big shoulders to handle my whining. But why not? Can I have it? Why can't I go there and do this? Well, Jim, I told you no, because I have a really huge blessing for you over here. You can't see it yet, but it's just right here. But I want this now, because I deserve this. Jim, what you really deserve is death, huh? Death, yeah. So back up. Your blessing's over here, but I need you to walk this way right now. That's tough for us. That's tough for us. We've got to do it. Listen to me. With each seal being opening, and they're opened by Christ in heaven, humanity is brought one step closer to the end of time. The brink of eternity. The second movement, get this, the silence in heaven. Jesus breaks the last remaining scroll and the wheels of God's judgment, get this, speeds up, preparing the way for the second coming of Christ to the earth in the end. But before this happens, something strange happens. Something strange in the neighborhood, like that old song. Silence. Total silence. Before then, everybody was jamming up there. A lot of noise. Now silence. I believe that as the seventh seal is open, the host in heaven are just awestruck. They're awestruck. Are we awestruck about our Lord and Savior? Do we have the kind of relationship? That sometimes when we're praying, we just weep. 
because we know we haven't quite got it right. But God is working in us to help us to get it right. Do we have the kind of relationship with God that we call on him anytime, any place, during anything that we're doing, anything that we're going through? Why do we try to fix things ourselves? I still have to work on that one. Something happens, I got this. We try to fix it ourselves. God doesn't want us to do that. He wants us to come to him. He says, I got this. We can't do it ourselves. Good or bad or indifferent, we can't do it ourselves. He blesses us. He blesses us. The sovereign power of God is about to be released. Get this in ways that will cause the world to convulse and everything will be changed forever. So the inhabitants of heaven are stunned to silence. I can't even say anything. But there is something more here. Jesus deliberately, get this, pauses to show John and us that are gathered power, our powers have the effect, and our prayers have the effect to create history. You can read different things in the Bible where God, someone prayed to God, and God said, okay, I can work with that. I could work with that. You don't think God is for you? He is, church. He is for you. And everything that you are, he is for you. I don't see who could be against us if God is for us. No one. Question, do our prayers truly accelerate the fulfillment of God's promise. Do we pray for God to come? I do. We sing a song. Come, Jesus, come. That's what we're here to do. Are we asking God to come? No, nope, my life is good here. I got everything I need. Really? Hmm. I don't need nothing else. I've had people say, oh, the world will take care of itself. I'm looking at it. I'm not quite sure about that one. I'm not quite sure about that one, church. You know, the truth about this passage, the saints of God appear insignificant to men at large. But in the sight of God, they matter. We matter, God's children. All these things are going to take place or held back on their account. God doesn't want any of us to perish. Did you know that? He wants us all to be saved. Someone said again, I think it was uh, John in the men's group this morning. This John. He said... It's about what God is doing. I'm kind of paraphrasing here. It's about what God is doing and what we can't do. That's huge. That's so true. The praise of angels gives away to silence so the saints may be heard. In other words, the silence after opening up the seventh seal, we have a dramatic presentation to the importance of prayers of the saints. Church, what this whole thing is saying is that we need to be praying and we need to be in prayer. Not little rope prayers. God hears all our prayers. But we need to be in serious prayer right now, every day. We need to pray for our churches. 
We need to pray for our families, our schools. We need to pray for our government. You may not like it. You may have issues with it, but you need to pray for the government. You need to pray for your significant other. You need to pray for your children. I believe if we could do that, boy, we'd see a change like we've never seen before in people in this world. Pray unselfishly to a holy God that wants the best for you. That's huge. You don't pray to get, get, get. You pray to give, give, give. That's why you pray. You let God lead you. And I think we need to do that. That's what's happening with our churches. We've got to in religiosity so much. We've gotten away from really what the church means. We've gotten away from that. And that's sad because God never intended it to be this way. Seek me. He says, I am the light. I am the truth. We've turned it around so that we're the light. And we've got the truth. Uh -uh. We've got to flip the script and allow God to flip the script. This brings me to this final movement, church. If we look at verse 3, another angel with a gold incense burner came and stood at the altar. He was given a large amount of incense to offer, get this, with the prayers of all the saints on the gold altar in front of the throne. So here's this angel standing before God. Here are the prayers of the saints. Wouldn't you want your prayers to be right in that bunch of prayers? Here's the prayers. I thought that was awesome. These prayers have been piling up. I know people say, God doesn't hear a prayer. I had a preacher tell me this. Oh, that's Old Testament. God doesn't do miracles and he doesn't hear prayers anymore. Well, I'm going to tell you something, church. I hope he does because I'm sending him a bunch of them up there and I hope he hears me. I know this. I cannot make it without him. I'm useless without my Heavenly Father. I am not a perfect man. That's why I need Jesus in my life. Do you need Jesus in your life? I hope you do. He wants to be there. We reject him. We reject a holy God every day. We don't even realize it. We go down the street and we're mad at somebody that cuts us off. And we say, not so nice a word, or we give a one-finger salute. God has to look at that. Hmm, ooh, that hurt. We don't even think about it. It just happened. I'm tired of that line, too. Oh, it just happened. I had an affair. Oh, it just happened. I didn't mean for it to. Church, God has to look at that. We steal something from work. Oh, they got thousands of them in there and back. I just took one or two. He has to look at you stealing. If it's just a little thing, the little things matter. I told a little white lie. What is that? It's just a little white lie. As opposed to a big black lie? I don't get it. A lie is a lie. God has to hear that. He has to hear you scream at your wife when you're mad. Or he has to hear you yell at your children. He has to hear you yell at your employees or something. He listens to all of that. Oh, but I'm just human. Yes, you are. But you're God's human. And he's made you for a better purpose than this. Do you believe that? I really want you to understand that, church. It is not easy being a child of God. I get it. 
I get it. Oh, more than anybody, I get it. I've been down some roads. I don't want to go down anymore. But you know, each time I took a step and I was crying and praying, church, and asking God to turn me around, he was right there. Right there with me. Did you know that? That's awesome. Lord, you were right there. Yes, I was. Through all your screw-ups and mess-ups, I was right there, Jim. Wow. Why? Because I love you. You love me, absolutely. I knew you before you were even born. Wow. I knew every hair on your head. I can count. Right now, Jim, you got 29. <laughs> but I knew you. We need to stop worrying about what other people are thinking about other, of us as Christians, as believers in Christ, and start reacting to what God is telling us to do. We're too quiet, church, as believers. We need to shout and make some of the other people out there are doing it. Running around the streets, black lives matter, this, 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 this. Hey, all lives matter. But you know what? God matters. Why aren't we marching around with signs like that? God matters. We're too timid. God matters. What do you mean? God, but I serve matters. Come over here. Let me tell you about it. I've had people, non-Christians, say, Jim, can you pray for me? And I missed it. I missed it. Can you pray for me? Yes. I'll pray right now. Yes, I can pray for you. Don't miss the opportunities. Oh, I'm not a preacher. I'm not, I can't do that. Don't miss the opportunities, church, that God will put right in front of your face if you're paying attention, if you're in line to what he wants you to do. He'll put them right there. Don't miss the opportunities when someone comes and tells you, hey, brother, you need to listen to this. I think God is speaking to you. Open your mind. Open your hearts. Let him pour it in and fill you up. Christians are running around empty. I don't know, Brother Jim, I, I don't know what God wants me to do. You know, I've been a Christian for 59 and a half years, but I don't know what God wants me. I just don't get it. I'm not making fun, but all I'm pointing out is a sad state of affairs. We need to know what God is saying to us. How do we know that? Well, I have one. It's over there by the trash compactors. Well, take it out and read it. My knee's a little creaky. Well, get down on your knees and move up and down. They'll get less creaky. What I'm saying is we need to be praying about what God wants and our purpose. So many tell me that. I tell people, I don't have a purpose in my life. That's sad. Ask God. Ask God. What is my purpose? Lord, what do you want me to do? He'll show you because he's looking for warriors. <laughs> the battle. There are so many things going on, and God is looking for people to stand up and say, Enough. Enough. I'm a child of God, and this is what God wants me to do. I'm bringing her home. All these prayers go out on the altar before his throne. Millions and millions of prayers, church, accumulate around God's throne. People say, how can that can happen? Well, we can invent a microchip that holds countless millions of bytes of communication. I think God can... Handle a lot of prayers. Revelation 8 shows us that the prayers of the saints, this is what this whole thing is about. God uses them to usher in the end of the world. Prayer, that's the key. Our prayers change history in more ways perhaps than we even recognize. Did you know that? God listens to us when we pray. He does? He surely does. You mean if I get out on my hands and knees and my heart is open and my 
head, brain is open, and I ask God certain things and talk to God about certain things, he hears me? Absolutely. I don't care what you've been through and what you're going through. When you come to God at that very moment, he's right there. I know I'm a witness for that. Thank you, Jesus. I know. I know. Maybe I can't explain all this to you in perfect terms, but I can tell you what God has done for me, church. I can be a witness that way. I can tell you that God took an ugly individual and he put his feet on solid ground. He opened up his heart and poured, poured in his truths. And I've been running after him ever since. Amen. Not perfect, of course, but trusting him to take me to that perfection. Not one prayer that anybody prays in truth has ever turned back. Really? You know those quick prayers when you're having, going down the road and you slide on ice and you say, Jesus, help me. I've been there. And that car somehow straightens out. Oh. Can we give God glory for that? How about having a broken relationship with someone and they come back and they say, I'm sorry. I shouldn't have said that. I shouldn't have done that. And you were right. You don't think God is working then? He is, church. God works through people, each one of us. Did you know that? He can snap it and be done. But he likes to work through each one of us, and that's why it's hard sometimes for the non-believer to understand. Why can't God make us all better? Well, he gave us a choice, and we're pretty dumb about choices sometimes. It's our, church to come, it's our choice to come to him. He gives us a choice. Well, the world is messed up, Pastor Jim. People killing each other and all kinds of weirdness going on. I know. I know. Why? Why would God allow that? He didn't. What? He doesn't. That is a choice that we make. Really? Yeah, it is. It's a choice that we make. And it's a choice that we make to turn back to him. Do we understand that? not him. He gave us COVID. No, he didn't. Satan might be using that, but God didn't give us COVID. But I'm sick. Yeah. Hey, uh, did you ever uh, seek God through the scriptures? Have you ever been praying to him? No, I've been too sick to do that. I'm being kind of funny here, but it's truth, church. It's truth. God's truth, not Jim Young's. Right here. My last thing is, what God wants us to believe about prayers is that none are lost. Don't be afraid. I don't pray very nice. I'm not very elegant. Well, he doesn't give two hoops and a holler if you're not elegant in speech and can make the perfect prayer. What he cares about is your heart. Where is your heart when you're talking to God? Watching the Broncos? They need a lot of prayer. My point is, God doesn't care about any of that stuff. He just wants you to come to him. No prayer is wasted or pointless. Get this. No one is lost or forgotten. None of us, none of us, church, are lost and forgotten. It's amazing to me, and I'm done here, that God can start right here, everyone in this auditorium, love them right where they are, and know everything about them, think about that, and want a personal relationship with them. 
That is huge. We have access to God, holy God. We forget that. Well, how does that work? You pray to him. You talk to him. We have access to him, totally. Come to me, he says. Again, no prayer is wasted. No prayer is pointless. No one is lost or forgotten. Jesus God, thank you for the words you have given me this morning and to teach and preach your holy word. We will not compromise. We will not back up. We will be right where you want us to be, Lord. It's not about us. It is about you. Thank you for these dear saints that are here this morning. Thank you for those listening out there, radio land. Thank you, God, for what you're going to do in our hearts and in our lives if we just allow you to. I pray for each and every one of these people. I love them, Father, but I cannot love them like you do. I lift them up to you, all their issues, problems, circumstances, the good and the bad. I lift it up to you, Father, this morning. You will take it and you will fix it and you will make it the way that you see fit to be. Thank you for truth. Thank you for your truth, Father. Your word is uncompromised and is absolute, and I will and we will, this church will stand on that truth no matter what. We love you, Father. And these things we ask in your mighty name, we say amen. Okay. You know, as we um, think about what it's going to be like in heaven and and what's happening as the end times come and it's sometimes hard to remember that God is pursuing us as much as he wants us to come to him he's pursuing us he's going to keep trying to, to reach us and um, he keeps trying to speak to us just have to listen you can stand with us if you like King of glory that pursues me with his love and haunts me with each hearing of his softly spoken words. My conscience a reminder of forgiveness that I Who is this King of glory? Who offers it to me? Who is this King of angels? Oh, blessed Prince of Peace, revealing things of heaven and all its mysteries. this part. His name is Jesus, precious Jesus, Lord Almighty, King of my heart, King of glory. Who is this King of glory? strength and majesty 
and wisdom beyond measure. The gracious King of Kings. The Lord of earth and heaven. The creator of all things. He is the King of glory. He's everything to me. Sing this with us, church. His name is Jesus, precious Jesus, Lord Almighty, King of my heart, King of glory. His name is Jesus, precious Jesus. Lord Almighty, King of my heart, King of glory. Lord Almighty, King of my heart, King of glory. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for this opportunity once again to be with you on Sunday morning here. And uh, Lord, it teaches us that we really need to be with you every day. But thank you for the opportunity to gather with the saints here.